31st, 2012. This is HRM Caesar St. Augustine de Buenaparte, uh, also known as Reality Supreme Being on YouTube, and I am still a presidential candidate, at least as far as this bogus election is concerned. Uh, I'm sure there are other candidates out there that have probably made YouTubes, but <clears throat> the problem here is, is what I've told you before, uh, the Bilderberg Group, Carlotto Commission, big money interest, who's really pulling the strings on the mainstream media, uh, why they wait, if they do do a story on any opposing candidate, it's at the last minute, and you end up on page 35 of the classified ads, I mean, nobody watches it. Um, most of the general accepted um, um, qualifications for running for president is that you can list yourself as running, but if you don't travel the country and visit all the moron, the vo voting morons in the country, and pretend to like them and pretend to to be on their side and and so on and so forth. I mean, you know, I like I said, you you have the most bipolar contradictory country in the whole world. I'm sure other countries are just as contradictory if not worse, but you've no right to keep me prisoner here and, and, and subject to have subjected me to all of this pain and suffering, watching my stuff being auctioned off, storage, etc., public storage, uh, all the mistreatment that I have gotten. The stories could fill volumes of books. And what would it change? Nothing. So what? Yeah, I might make some money off of a book. Well, if I wanted to edit a book, all I have to do is refer to all of my YouTubes and take my own notes and get somebody to sit there and put it in a book form and, and try to sell it to some publisher. You know, this, that's why I call my YouTube, my life story, my book. You know, you, your society put wheels into motion that slowly killed me. And you've done it to other people, too. By paying taxes, you kill innocent men, women, and children in other countries like Afghanistan, Panama, Vietnam, Iraq. I mean, you know, it just goes on and on. You people think that life is so cheap that it doesn't matter if somebody in a poor country dies. I might remind you, if you go back and study all of your history, many, many great people who became great citizens and great discoverers of great inventions <coughs> and, and great philosophies were people that came from poor backgrounds, came from war-torn areas, came from, you know, uh, look at Werner von Braun, you know, he's working for the Germans one minute, the U.S. captures him, brings him over here, and he helps us go to the moon, you know gets a nice big apartment, gets uh, pretty much prosti prostitutorized. They all become, uh, all these politicians, every, and the scientists that work for them, they're all prostitutes. They, they work for money. And of course they realize that in order to keep their family group going, they got to keep playing this game. And see, that's where slavery, what I call abstract slavery, exists. So, uh, I got like more than 3,000, almost 4,000 views each when I was talking about nude Ambassador Stevens, the guy who got killed over there. But uh, I told everybody to check uh, Vote Smart and see my <coughs> speech, which my previous videos showed some of the paperwork involved. But it showed that, um, that I made a cryptic uh, statement, a prediction, at the opening of the letter in the speech that says, uh, you've committed a heinous crime against our my ambassador, and it's interesting to note that I never mentioned ambassador in any of my other uh, papers, even though this one was mentioned in 2008, and that four years later, one of your own ambassadors is you know murdered, killed, whatever you know in Libya. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. You people commit murder. Remember what I said in one of my other videos that it's not religion that should decide why people should live and die or what's right or wrong or what's sinful and what isn't. It's the fact that when you destroy DNA, you're destroying one less chance that that particular person may be the next discoverer of something very, very advantageous for the species as a whole. 
but instead you people ignore me. Uh, the wheels were set in motion many years ago because of my cars, boats, trucks, by ISO fanatics in the city of Los Angeles, by creepy crawly jerks who work for the city, who, who use the color of law, went beyond the course and scope of their employment, violated my civil rights repeatedly, and there's no way that you can bring back all those children that you've killed with your voting dollars, okay? with your tax dollars. There's no way you can bring back all of my things. So the only thing left for people like me is revenge. Yeah, of course. I know fully well that even if I had an army and I could extract revenge on every single person that had any hand in doing what they did to me, especially the ones directly, and this would include mayors, governors, whoever, it wouldn't bring back my buses, my cars, my boats, all the important things that are important to me while I am alive. Instead, you people chose to harass, persecute me, force me to move from place to place. You, you set the wheels in motion that destroyed my life, destroyed my teeth, destroyed my health, and it's still doing it. You don't get it. And so what if I get what? 3,000 views. So what if I get 10 million views? whoop te do. That wouldn't impress me unless those same 10 or 20 million people or 30 million people would band behind me, take all their money out of the banks, and really show the government who's in control. That's the answer. I don't know why you people are doing it, continuing to ignore me, and why the media continues to. The only way the media would not would stop ignoring me is if you people actually started doing that and the government started going oh my god it's happening in Oklahoma City it's happening in New York City it's happening in Minnesota it's happening in South Dakota it's happening in every 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 native people's nation all the Indians just stopped cooperating with your banks, banking institutions, and everything. See, now they've got them hooked, too. They're like prostitutes. They have their uh, casinos. You think they're going to stop banking with the banks? Heck no, they're making too much money. So, <clears throat> in a roundabout way, the government has, has formulated for many, many decades, uh, more than 100 years, a perfect way of how to control people, pretty much. And one way is through this money thing. And that's sad because it has certainly destroyed my life. And that's why I've done 333, 334 videos, hoping that <coughs> maybe in all this time I could have amassed some amount of people to, uh, to help me out. But you're all in the same boat I am. Not one person can help another or help another or help another because you've all been pushed into a corner of situational irony. Well, if I do that, I have to take time out from what I'm doing just to keep my head above the water. And I understand that. But there are risks that you have to take when you form a revolution, and that's one of the risks. You have to be willing to extend that risk to fight injustice, to fight the true, true injustice that is everywhere. From, the, from above the president's head, above them, they're all Bilderberg, Trilateral Commission, Rockefeller puppets. <clears throat> it isn't just Rockefeller, it's all the rich families of the United States. Getty, oil, all of the oil companies, all the labor unions. They're, it's such a quagmire, is the best word for it. It's a mess of spaghetti. You could never unravel it. And even if you did, uh, just how much progress would you really make? How do we interpret progress? Good progress versus uh, secret, conniving, devious progress that tries to control people at the same time that it's doing the progress. I mean, the, the behavior patterns of your whole society is sick because it's every last one entrepreneur, every person, is all only after money. I'm in it only for myself. You can hear it in their minds. They don't care. When people uh, bought my stuff in the auction, the guy made supposedly claims he made $3,800 off of an antique radio I had in there. 
and I told him about it. I was there at the auction. I didn't have any money to bid on my own stuff. And the lady that was with me could have bid on my stuff and helped me keep my stuff because it was only a hundred and something dollars for one storage and they had two hundred and something for the other. So here I am with nothing again. Uh, another th th one and a half years worth of work destroyed by storage, etc., by uh, public storage, by building and safety, the LAPD, the fire department, both public, I, without mentioning the whole list, I've already done that in my past videos, both public and private entities, private meaning just people like you and me, just making the most of things and taking the most from people. And even though I approached those two guys that and introduced myself, yesterday I met them again and they said they're going to empty the whole thing, take it to a yard sale. And they didn't tell me where the yard sale was going to be. They had changed their mind. They'd made so much money off the $300 investment already. And the reason, see, the reason they were able to successfully do that was because they have a stable place, some kind of stable place to keep their computers, to keep an account with eBay or whatever. See, I don't have that. I couldn't have that there at the storage. They don't allow you to work inside the storage there. It, it, it's one of those things that I tried to set up and it just couldn't happen because I had too many negative things still affecting me from what these people did in Los Angeles did to me. And, it, and it's cause and effect and people don't want to believe, especially court systems, they don't want to accept that kind of argument. Cause and effect does exist. Brings pressure to bear, it's called. Illegal violation of people's civil rights by bringing pressure to bear on a person knowing full well you are violating their civil rights. The right to peaceful, peaceful, quiet enjoyment of whatever property you own and whatever property you're at. And this is what they did. So, what am I supposed to do? You know, I'm slowly dying anyway. You know, I just wish it would happen faster so that I don't have to talk anymore. I don't have to eat anymore. I don't have to wander the streets anymore. I don't have to know from day to day that there isn't one person on this planet that's going to vote for me. There isn't one person on this planet that's going to form a revolution, take their money out of the bank, stop buying oil, at least for a month. There isn't one person that's going to do it. And even if one person did it, it wouldn't have an effect. So, so what am I supposed to do? You know, continue to die. I mean, we're all dying anyway, one way or the other. Um, uh, a person that hits the age of 30, there's certain mandatory things that they need to do in order to keep themselves healthy the rest of their life, however long that is. And if you don't have a stable place and your kitchen, your lifestyle, everything has been destroyed and you've been pushed into storages and then lost even more stuff, it, it becomes a battle that you can't win. So that's what you people have done to me. And if you're listening to this video, whether you like me or not, whether you like my style of ranting and raving, and, and all of the stuff that I've said in the videos, good and bad, and the reasons for saying the good and bad, because, you know, shock effect is the only thing the media will usually, usually will listen to. But not in this case, uh-uh. Because up at the highest levels, they know who I am, and they say, no, this guy has to be permanently blacklisted forever. We don't want to kill him but we don't want him to be known about nationally. Now, you add up how many video people have looked at my YouTube. In the span of three years since I started back when they burnt my house at DeSoto and Hart in Canoga Park, and I'm saying I'm blaming the city for that. The fire, the very same fire department that put the fire out is responsible for the fire being set to begin with. Anyway, <coughs> um, there is no way that all the number of people bunched together, even as a group, is a, a, maybe about 10, 11,000 people. That doesn't mean anything, even in a city election. That carries no power, no weight, no nothing. So the people that have looked at my videos were just people that wanted to be entertained, ha ha ha, ho ho ho, or people from other countries, okay, hey, look what they're doing to this guy. 
I wish Al Qaeda was listening to my tapes. Because maybe that would give them an excuse to even do more violence on everybody. Maybe that's why they did it to Libya and all of the other stuff. Because they looked at the video, the very same terror, the alleged terrorist. They look at it and they go, hey, look how they treat their own people. This poor guy, he's been kicked around, his stuff has been stolen, his life has been destroyed, just like many people of us here in Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, Egypt, all the leaders have done to us here, and here they're doing it to there, over there too. And this guy's able to talk on YouTube and tell everybody about it. I mean, I had messages from Bangladesh and India and a few other people. But what good does it do? Does it really do any good? No. So, <clears throat> I'm at 15 and a half minutes into the video, and yesterday I did a video, and I think I got like a little less than 20 views, something like that. Um, even though I use the, the titles I'm using are naked, sex, violence, blood, gore, which, or, which re really did attract attention. When I put uh, Ambassador Stevens and all that, there were like uh, 3,800 people that saw part one, part two immediately the night after or night or two, the day or two after the uh, Libya thing would happened you know but like I said I predicted it and I'm the only presidential candidate who has possession of the presidential seal that put those that put the seal on all the documents that made those cryptic predictions I keep having to repeat and show this over and over again because <clears throat> because this is what proves who I am. This is, doesn't matter what they say, what they do, even if they labeled the long letter I sent to the Clinton administration in 1993, even if they classify top secret someday, they're going to say, who owned this? And here it is in my hand. I'm the one that put that gold seal and signed my name across the gold seal on that letter. This is it. And, uh, and that's the actual seal of the real president of the United States, and that's me. That's what my seal looks like. There it is. Let's see if it can focus. See? That's the real seal. It doesn't have to say president of the United States all the way around it. It's just the actual seal. It's understood what the seal is. So, that's on a piece of gold foil that I, you know, imprinted two days ago right here on YouTube. So, uh, I mean, I invented the oil tanker, spherical oil tanker, where if you punch a hole anywhere, like in this green part here, if there's a hole under the water line, you just tip it upward and the oil spill stops. See, from 1979 on, during the French oil spill, um, they could have stopped the oil spills if they'd started building spherical uh, containers to ship the oil in across the oceans. But and I patented it and went through the whole thing with me and my twin went through the patent process. But you know it doesn't matter. Or the two-story house that back in the 80s and mid 80s would have made a dent in the droughts. But you know, see again, I'm totally being ignored. Nobody cares. The media doesn't care. They're not going to pay attention to me. This is this is all about evil, sick, prejudice, ignoring somebody. When the Secret Service came to my house at DeSoto and Hart in Canoga Park, I asked them, is there some, something you can do to help me? Nope. Hmm. I'm a presidential candidate, too. Somebody burned my house. You people are supposed to pre pres protect presidential candidates. Whether, they're, whether they've managed to get their message across to one person in the country or, a million, or millions of people in the country. So they were derelict of their duty. So these are sick people. They're all sick because they're all prostitutes. They all have been bought and paid for. And unfortunately, I'm running low on time here and I got to go see if I can find an inner tube for something that I'm working on and rent, try to rent another truck, try to get hold of a friend who can help me. Although I really don't have that many friends who are in a position to really help. And when they do, they end up being hurt just alongside with me and you know that's sad